In this video, we will explore how to create multi-agent system using Google's ADK framework. So whenever we are going to create a multi-agent system in using Google ADK framework, then there are two important components in it. One is LLM agents and another is workflow agents. As of now, whatever code we have written so far, it's mainly using the LLM agent. So LLM agents are basically non-deterministic nature. They uses LLM to interpret instructions and context. And they decide dynamically how to proceed, which tools to use, and in case of transfer control, they can pass the control to another agent. So everything happens dynamically in this one. In this case, we cannot have any predefined path for LLM agents. We just provide all the required tools and instructions to LLM agents. Then LLM agents can take a call by its own. Whereas in workflow agents, these are deterministic and predictable in nature. And this is purely designed for orchestration, the flow of sub agents. And this particular workflow agents, they work on the predefined logic and they are not driven by LLM. So using LLM agents, you can getting something which is not deterministic in nature, which doesn't have any predefined path. But using workflow agent, you can define a path. You can keep your goal deterministic and predictable in nature. So what are these workflow agents? So if we go a bit deeper into workflow agents, then there are basically three kind of workflow agents. First is sequential agent where we can define agents in the sequential manner. So first the input is going to get passed to agent. Then this particular agent is going to generate some output. It will transfer everything to agent 2. Agent 2 will take this output as an input for it and then it will produce some other output which is going to be get consumed by some other agents. So in this case you are defining your agent in a chain or a sequential format. That's why this is called a sequential workflow. Another is parallel agent. So in this case as you can assume you are going to get that input but that that input is going to get passed to multiple agents simultaneously and all those agents are going to process that input in parallel that's why this is called parallel workflow and then there is a loop workflow in this particular workflow what would happen you are going to pass that input to one particular agent here you can see this agent can pass output to some other agent eventually the final output can come back to the first agent so in this case everything is going to run in the loop that's why this is called a loop workflow agent now we'll see how to implement all this using code so so first we know about the LLM agent as I said like we have been utilizing this LLM agent to define our agent all along. So we know like we just have to pass the name description instructions model and you can also pass tools output schema output key. So this is going to be your LLM agent which is going to be crucial key in defining our agent. But now we will go over the workflow agent and we'll see like how we can define a sequential workflow using this particular agent. So in this case. I'm just going to switch to sequential code and we will just go over like first of all to use the sequential agent workflow you have to import it from the agent library only. So here we have imported LLM agent and along with this we have also imported sequential agent. Now you can see here first agent we are defining using LLM agent only and what we are saying okay you are an agent that provides the capital city of a country and we are storing the output in our output key. So we are just going to get the generated output and put it into this output key which is going to be the capital city. Now you can see like we are defining one more agent over here again using LLM agent only and what we are saying you are an agent that provides the approx pop population of a given city and this particular city you can see we are getting it from our first agent to run these two particular agents we know like there is a dependency of this particular agent on the first agent so we have to run these two agent in the sequential manner and that's where we are going to leverage this sequential agent you can see at the final we are defining this sequential agent and we are giving the name as a pipeline agent and under this the important part is this sub agents which we are you know passing it over here so when you define something called sub agent then under this you can pass all your agents in the list format and here what we have to keep it in mind you have to define your agents order so in this case because I have defined the capital agent first so first of all capital agent is going to get executed it is going to generate the output and after this I am just defining the population agent suppose if I reverse this order then first the population agent is going to run and after this the capital agent is going to run so sequential agent the order matters so with this because we are going to run this using ADK web so we are going to have this root agent defined on the sequential agent not on the above LLM agents so I can just copy this code and we know like if you have to run it using ADK web then we have to put everything into agent.py I'm just going to paste it over here going to just save it and then I can invoke my virtual environment to run this particular 
and I'm just going to run ADK web. In this case, I have selected my folder, which is going to multi agents. And then I'm just going to pass a country name, which is going to be India. The first agent has given me the capital of the country. And then you can see the second agent is going to give me the approx population. And this both agent run in a sequential mode. So let's track it. You can see like how this is coming over here. So first the capital agent is going to get invoked and it is going to pass its output to the population agent. This is going to be the request and this is going to be the response. In this case, now just to see the second way, we can click on this. And in this case, you can see the population agent got triggered and it has got the request like this. And then it has generated a response in this way, which is going to come over here. Now, this is your sequential agent. Now, after this, we are going to go to parallel agent. And in this case, you can see if you want to leverage the parallel agent, then you have to import it from Google ADK agents only. So in this case, you can see like we have defined these two agents. First is going to be our natural resource agent. And we are just asking, okay, give me the list of countries based on the given input who are rich in natural resources. Summarize the information in two lines and use the given Google search tool to achieve the same. That's actually we have imported inbuilt Google search over here and we are passing it under a tool. Again, we are capturing the output in this natural resource countries. Now, similarly, we have defined this second agent and we have defined this agent as a GDP per capita agent. This is going to give us a list of uh, countries who are having the highest GDP per capita and we are also passing the same tool here to achieve the same and we are capturing the output under this particular key. Now one thing you may have noticed we are not passing any kind of output from this particular agent to this agent because there is no dependency as such and that's the perfect scenario where actually we can execute these two agents in parallel. So to execute these two different agents in, in parallel mode we are using this parallel agent which we have imported earlier under this also we are passing our agent under the sub agents and in this case the order doesn't matter because all these two agents are going to run in parallel you can either put this particular agent first or you can put this particular agent at the last it doesn't matter so one thing you have noticed like whenever you are using agents in parallel then you need to aggregate the responses of these two particular agents right otherwise this would have its own execution it will have its own execution but you need to aggregate the response from this particular agent and this particular agent so you need to have some kind of agent at the last which is going to get the response from two agent and can summarize or aggregate it for the end user and that's why the parallel workflow will execute first and then this will execute after this and then we can have a sequential workflow on top of it so that we can have the execution of this particular parallel workflow first and after that we can have a merger agent and same thing actually what we are doing over here so you can see like here we have defined our merger agent and this agent what exactly it's going to do it's going to take the input summaries whatever we have passed so far so it will take the output generated from parallel agent as an input over here. So you can see the input summaries. So this is going to be natural resource countries. And this is the key, which is going to be the output from this particular agent. And then GDP growth country, which is going to be the output from this particular agent, because these two are going to run in parallel. So we are going to have this merger agent, which is going to aggregate the responses from these two parallelly executing agent. And, and then we are defining the output on top of it. So we are just saying a summary of country rich in natural resources and GDP growth and then we are saying okay synthesize the information from the input summaries and provide a concise overview of the countries rich in natural resources and GDP growth include key insights and comparisons where relevant this is how actually we are aggregating the response and now if you see we do have parallel agent which has to be executed first and then we should have a merger agent which has to be executed after that. So that's why we have defined a sequential pipeline agent which is going to be like this. And under this we are just passing our parallel agent. And after this we are passing our merger agent because we want the parallel agent to get executed first. And after that we want our merger agent to get executed. And this particular final agent whatever we are passing we are defining it as a root agent because from, because from here the workflow is going to get executed. Now I need to take all this code and again put it into agent.py so that we can run it using adk web so to execute it i will go to this adk web portal and i'm just going to say give me the list of two countries who are rich in natural resources and have the highest per capita so here you can see how this has executed so first agent has given this particular output then we have the output from this 
agent so these two were running in parallel at the last we have the information over here this particular agent is going to be agent which is going to aggregate the responses from the above two agents based on the given information so we'll see that in action so first you can see the event so we are just going to click on this so here you can see we do have the research and synthesis agent and this is calling this gdp per capita and the natural resource agent in parallel and they are using this google search tool this is coming in this particular box which is going to be the pipeline agent parallel agent and at the top you see this research and synthesis agent which is going to be the sequential agent so it will wait first of all this parallel agent to be executed first and then the merger agent is going to get executed so in this case you can see the natural resource agent got executed and it has generated a response which we could see at the top similarly if you go to other one then in this case you can see the gdp per capita research agent got executed and it has given a response like this which you can just map it over here i can provide you a list of countries that are rich in natural resources and then at the last we are going to have this merger agent and this is going to give you the final output which is going to come over here here so that's how you can define your agents using parallel agent so at the last we do have the loop workflow agent so in this particular agent what we are going to do we are going to have a basic architect agent and this basic architect agent going to give us a design based on the given input now this particular design is going to pass to this critique agent which is going to critique the given design and then it will pass it to refine agent to refine the given design this two things is going to get executed in the loop so the refine agent would refine the given design and then it will pass again to critique agent critique agent is again going to critique the design and it will make sure all the edge cases has been handled appropriately and this particular workflow is going to get executed three times because we are going to define our max iteration as three and again in this case we are not just going to execute loop workflow all alone in this case also because first of all we have to execute our basic architect agent and then loop workflow agent so we are going to have our sequential workflow at the top in this case also which would make sure the execution is going to happen in, in this way so for this we will go to our agent underscore loop dot py and here you can see first is our basic arc agent and we have just asked it to come up with the basic system design for the given scenario the output is going to get stored into the basic arc output and after that we are going to define our critique design agent this particular agent is going to critique the given design so we have to pass the put generator from the first agent over here so we are passing like this and here in this case you can see we have given certain instruction you need to critique the provided design and suggest improvement for scalability maintainability and performance and the output is going to get stored into the critique out at the last we are going to have our refined design agent so we are just asking it to you know refine the given architecture design and if the design is good you should return the design as it with the phrase the design is good else you need to refine the provided design based on the critique and the suggest improvement for scalability maintainability and performance now in this case as you can see the input is going to be this basic arc output and the critique output so we are just capturing everything whatever agents have executed and we are just passing it over here now as we have seen in the diagram we have to define our loop agent again if you have to use the loop agent we have to import it from our google.adk.agents only but we want to keep this critique and refined design in the loop so that when the design is going to get refined it, it can be critiqued continuously at least for three times and that's what actually we have defined over here the agent may reach up to this point or may not reach up to this point if the critique design agent feels okay the design is proper it may stop before reaching to this particular threshold or maximum it can go for you know three times that's what actually we have captured by defining this max iteration so this particular option you will only see in the loop agent so after that we are defining our sequential agent which we are defining as a root agent in this case as well because we want the basic agent to generate the basic architecture first and then we want like everything to run in the loop let me just take this and we are going to put it into agent.py once more and i would just go over here i will just click on this new session now i'm just going to ask a system design question so i'm just going to say give me a system design for url shortener service and i will just pass it to agent now the basic architecture agent should come up with the basic design and after that everything should run in the loop where the refine and critique agent was would come into picture to refine the given system design you can see the basic design has been generated overall it is saying the refined design is excellent and address now it is going to get passed to critique agent 
Now again, some refinement has happened in this case as well based on the previous critique. So we'll see now at the bottom what exactly happened. It is still running. It is saying the design is good. It means it will come out of the loop now because the agent has marked this particular design as a good one. So you can see like there were a lot of iteration happened in this case and we can just track it based on the event so you can see at in this case six events have been happened so first the basic design got executed over here after this it is get passed to critique agent critique after this it it passed to refine agent and then you can see again it get passed to critique agent so that's iteration two again to refine agent just to get the output and that's why you see like a lot of text and chats has been generated over here like what exactly happened in each iteration till this particular event refine agent was here so it has refined the design two times and after that again it get passed to critique agent but in this case the critique agent after evaluating the design it has come up and said the design is good so it hasn't reached the maximum iteration because the critique agent has already stated the design as a good one otherwise maximum it can go for one more iteration to refine the given design now you can pass your use cases to this different workflow and can see how this is going to help you in your particular use cases that's all what we have in this video thank you for watching